Hello and welcome back, all my Dragon Ball theorists. It's the 20th of the month, and you know what that means. The new chapter 54 of the Dragon Ball Super manga is out, and it covered a lot. It really is setting everything up with what is about to transpire in this huge arc. We picked up right where we left off last month, where Krillin, Piccolo, and Jocko were struggling against the elite fighters in Moro's army. The main threat of this assault on Earth is the artificial life form 7-3, a very dangerous fighter that was created in a lab by a planet with advanced tech and science. This artificial being feels no emotions and does one thing well, which is follow orders, something later in the chapter everyone will be thankful for. Some of the ideas we theorized on 7-3 ended up coming to fruition in this chapter, except he used these abilities differently and the unexpected happened. So let's dive into this chapter and discuss everything. I love the very first panel page of Gohan vs. 7-3 that Toyotaro drew, and one of the things that was expected is that Gohan in the manga is no joke. He is incredibly powerful, so we knew that if anyone has a chance to get 7-3, it would be Gohan based on his performance at the Tournament of Power, where he defeated Kefla and eliminated her in the manga. So Gohan fans, you can rejoice some that he got to display how strong he still is in this chapter. Gohan opens with throwing 7-3 viciously, and here is where the artificial life form resorts to the abilities that he copied from Piccolo. Except, as we know, no one knows Piccolo's fighting techniques better than Gohan. They have trained together for decades, so the scattershot technique Gohan was able to quickly identify and use blazing speed to easily get the drop on 7-3. Gohan was so fast it even took Piccolo by surprise, and 7-3 is just outmatched by the Mystic Saiyan's powers. Piccolo helps Gohan out with a wardrobe change, and he is proud of Gohan, but has mixed feelings about him beating a copy of himself that easily. Now the heroes of Earth must end this battle, but 7-3 has a few more of Piccolo's techniques up his sleeve, and uses his gigantic form to attempt to even the fight against Gohan. I really like the artwork and focus on the fighting in each panel of this chapter. Gohan literally is picking 7-3 apart, going for his legs, and then smashing him down with a powerful kick from above. It's clear that Moro's elite fighters, as they are currently, are no match for the powers of Gohan. So Yumbo makes his move away from Kulin to check on this battle for himself, and this is where the Shimo Wrecker reveals their data on this planet is outdated, and it is Gohan that 7-3 should have copied. Shimo Wrecker, feeling the situation is desperate, gives 7-3 an order, whatever it takes, get your hand around that guy's neck. Now I thought that this was an amazing tribute done by Toyotaro in the next few panels that gave us a very similar situation of Goku vs Kefla in the anime, where Goku evaded all the attacks charging up a Kamehameha and doing a flip in midair to deliver one of my favorite energy blasts of all time in the series. Like many of you, it was something I watched over and over again. Now we have 7-3 using his stretched arms desperately trying to grab a hold of Gohan and copy him. Some beautiful artwork here as Gohan is not just avoiding these outstretched arms, but also begins to charge up a Kamehameha. Then when 7-3 thinks he has Gohan, in mid-air he flips just like Goku did to the energy blast by Kefla at the Tournament of Power. Gohan then runs up the elongated arms of 7-3 to unleash the Kamehameha right to his face. But before he finishes it, 7-3 does something totally unexpected. He shrinks back down to normal. Have our heroes won? Jocko says his abilities have worn off. It's time, Gohan. Finish him now and end this conflict. As a powerful Kamehameha is headed towards 7-3, Shimo Reka gives him the order to use what you have in stock. What could this actually mean? Well, in my matchup video of Gohan vs. 7-3, I had mentioned that one thing Gohan would have to worry about is if 7-3 can copy more than one person's ability at a time. That if this was possible, that means 7-3 has the portal ability still of the alien he absorbed before Piccolo or anyone else. Looks like this is indeed true, that 7-3 can copy up to three fighters' abilities at the same time and keep them in stock, shuffling through them as he fights. Although what no one expected is that 7-3 copied Moro's abilities before heading to Earth. So the powerful Kamehameha Gohan has fired was eaten by 7-3 just like as if he was Moro himself. This of course takes Earth's heroes by complete surprise and the tide is now completely turned on them. They haven't had to fight the Planet Eater yet and Jocko knows just how bad it is and tells everyone to take him down before he starts to absorb their energy. However, they can't even get close, and we have a repeat of what Moro did to Goku and Vegeta back on Namek, where he surrounded himself with energy blasting upward through the planet as he drains their power. Shimo Reka then alerts Sagamu that Earth put up quite a resistance and they had to resort to using Moro's copied abilities. 
Moro curious as to how his abilities are being used, they end up putting it up on a display screen as they look on and our heroes are about to face certain defeat. With there being a time limit to the copy abilities, they must end the fight quickly, which is where Yamba and Shimoreka start to beat down on the Drain Z fighters. It starts to become apparent that the situation is hopeless as Krillin, Gohan, and Piccolo are badly beaten, but Piccolo makes a statement to them that even if we die today, Goku and Vegeta will make sure you go down. 7-3 reminds Shimoreka that they were the Saiyans that were on Namek and confidently says, so what about them? Krillin tells them that they are training right now to beat you guys. This message is relayed to Moro and Sagambo. Here I will give credit to Sagambo as he wants Moro to absorb Earth now and track them down so it doesn't come back to bite them. However, Moro delays that order. He devises that if Goku and Vegeta are training somewhere and he waits, they will deliver him far greater energy to absorb. Moro orders his fighters to retreat as they pose no threat to them, and once the ones called Goku and Vegeta return with more energy than ever, he will consume them and their precious Earth. So for now, Earth and the Z Fighters are spared. 7-3 stops his energy absorption and they begin to pull back, stating they will return after those Saiyans show up. Krillin says, but why? Shimoreka alerts them to the dire situation that is in store for Earth. That Moro is going to come and gobble those Saiyans up himself. Then you and this precious planet are done for. They plan to return in just 20 days, but Jocko begs for more time as it isn't enough for them to arrive back. And Shimoreka agrees and says, fine. We will return in Cycle 8, and he will tell Moro. 7-3 then shuffles his fighter copies again back to the alien with the portal abilities and opens one up, and they leave as quickly as they arrive. The recovering Z fighters ask Jocko how long do they have, and it's two months to prepare for the final fight. Meanwhile, back on the planet where Goku is training with Mirus, Jocko has sent a message alerting Mirus what has transpired on Earth. Goku is eating and resting from his difficult training when Mirus tells him that they have two months before Moro arrives at Earth, which is more time than what they thought they would have. Then in the time chamber they are in, it will give Goku six months. Goku, now ready and focused, is eager to resume his training. Then it dawns on him. He asks Mirus, I just realized I've never seen you eat. Don't you get hungry? Mirus responds, I can eat or not eat at all. It's the same to me. A confused Goku responds, We said the same thing which then the panel cuts away to the two most interesting pages of the chapter. Whis is watching Mirus train Goku through his staff, and more importantly, he is at Zeno's palace without Beerus. The Grand Priest arrives and says he is sorry for making him wait. Now how can I help you, Whis? He apologizes for the sudden request and then states, I presume you are aware that our universe is once again in discord. It seems that way, the Grand Priest responds. Universe 7 is a restless one. What is interesting is that Whis states that he is deeply ashamed for it, and as his father inquires, well, what business do you have with me? I don't suppose you intend to ask for your universe to be saved. Whis exclaims, I would never. Angels must maintain neutrality, siding with neither good nor evil. Just so then, what would you ask of me? Whis came there for a very specific reason. There is something Whis wishes to confirm concerning the angel laws. The Grand Prix staring at Whis states, the matter of Mirus, I suppose, which Whis then replies, you are aware then, which is the cliffhanger chapter 54 ends on. I am super excited because we are finally going to get what appears to be some backstory and more information on the angels. I think that these last two pages and what the conversation between Whis and the Grand Prix will be about on these angel laws deserves its own video and we'll break that down coming up. Overall, I was really pleased with this entire chapter, and for me, they saved the best for last, because who doesn't want to know more about the Angels? I thought the fight between Gohan and 7-3 was awesome, and really enjoyed the little twist of 7-3 having Moro's powers. I was curious how they were going to give Goku and Vegeta all that time they needed to train, and come up with a way to counter Moro. So I thought that this was a great job of how they wrote that in. Now tell me though, what did you think of Chapter 54 of the manga? What was your favorite part? How do you think Earth's fighters will prepare in the upcoming two months for this epic battle against Moro, and will other fighters be brought in, like the androids to help? What do you think the Grand Priest is going to tell Whis about Mirus? I always love to hear your thoughts and theories in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to share it and smash that like button. Also, please subscribe and turn on that notification bell to keep those theories coming.